So where do folk and popular cultures originate and diffuse? So how do they start? Where do they come? What is the difference between folk and popular culture? That's what we're going to learn about in today's video. All right, so culture is a combination of three things. Um, we learned that it's about values, you know, what we take care of, what we care about, uh, material artifacts, and political institutions. What we're really going to focus on right now are the material artifacts. What are the tangible things um, that you can see um, in um, a culture to know uh, what it looks like, well, how it acts, how it functions? I want you to copy down this chart. I'm going to check it tomorrow in class. So you need to have this chart um, with us. You can pause the video now if you want to. Um, so copy it down, but you need to have this chart, and um, this will help you um, immensely understanding the difference between folk and popular culture. So material culture, uh, Rubenstein tells us that uh, uh, folk culture is traditionally practiced by small, isolated, homogenous groups in rural areas. And popular culture is characterized by large, heterogeneous groups of people who share common habits despite differences in other personal characteristics. So popular culture is a large, very different, very, uh, nobody, they're not the same groups of people around the world, where a folk culture is small, homogenous, that means same, heterogeneous means different. So they're the same groups of people, they're similar likes in smaller areas. Um, so we're talking about where culture is located and how do they impact the environment. Those are the two big things that we want to look at um, in this um, units. Here's just some examples. You have folk culture, right? Uh, popular culture, right here. Folk culture, right here. And then you see the combination. You have a folk culture-looking village, a small rural area, but then it has the internet service um, right up here, where it gives you that um, combination between the folk and the popular culture are coming in um, to similar places. So the first thing we talk about is the origins. Remember, they're anonymous. Uh, folk cultures are anonymous origins. They are um, um, a small, homogenous groups. Popular culture, large, heterogeneous groups. And it diffuses at a rapid pace. It diffuses through hierarchical diffusion. Remember, we talk about hierarchical diffusion from a person or place of influence, and then it diffuses down. Um, like a hierarchy, tri I told you triangle is the shape you should think of. So when it asks that how does popular culture diffuse, it diffuses hierarchically. Um, so you see here it goes from the runways to fashion models to um, high-end stores and then to um, more um, mainstream uh, stores here. A group like One Direction, that is a great example of hierarchical diffusion. It spreads rapidly throughout space, um, quickly. Um, as it moves, but it started from a TV show and then diffused down. Popular culture is different from folk culture because folk culture uh, diffuses um, through relocation diffusion. It's the only way that, you know, folk culture really, it doesn't move. The Amish are in um, the United States and the Amish are here because they moved here. Okay, it's not, the Amish culture isn't spreading rapidly throughout the United States. It has stayed in one spot. Um, it is there, and it got here because the Amish people moved from Europe uh, to the United States. So here's fill in the chart. Uh, who? He homogenous groups, heterogeneous groups. Origin is unknown. Popular culture, NBCs, when large urban areas, specifically in those NBCs. How did they diffuse? Folk culture diffuses through relocation, if any, or hierarchical, then contagious through uh, modern transportation and communication. Uh, the next thing is, where is it located? Where is it located? So you see here, you see farms, you see small areas, um, looks very rural. So folk culture is going to be in your more rural areas. Um, you're really not going to find them in major urban cities. You're not going to have pockets of folk culture there. You're going to see um, in these rural areas is where you're going to find this dominant folk culture. And of course, popular culture is a widespread international around the world. Um, all of that you see here, folk culture. Um, and we've seen this picture of the McDonald's right up against the um, Asian pagoda. Um, this is in, it could be in any major um, big city um, in their downtown area. So rural, isolated, clustered, um, wide, worldwide, urban, widely dispersed, those are your locations um, for folk and popular culture. Changes in culture. Well, Folk culture um, is similar 
um, as it goes throughout the times. So the Amish people in 1800, the rules and the, the beliefs, everything in the Amish people of 1800 are very similar to what the Amish people in 2000 are like. There may be some slight differences and some slight changes, but at its core, it is the same um, as it was in 1800. So there really is no change. So it changed, but the Amish is an example of a folk culture, but so are Native Americans. And so are the tribes in the Amazon and tribes in the um, Himalayan mountains and the Aborigines in Australia. So folk culture, although it doesn't change from t and over time, it changes depending on where you are. So it changes over space. It, you know, what it's like in the Amish people in Pennsylvania area is different from the Amazon tribes, is different from the Aborigines in Australia. Um, so it changes over space. Whereas popular culture, what was popular in the 60s is not necessarily popular in the 80s, not necessarily popular in 2014. So music is a great example of this, how popular music changes and new trends and new songs and new groups come and go. And they, they happen so what was popular when I was in high school may not be popular now that you are in high school. So popular culture changes over time, whereas folk culture changes over space. And speaking of music, what is the purpose of these music, uh, these types of music? Folk music um, is, uh, the purpose of folk music is to tell a story. A lot of oral traditions and history of these folk groups are passed down through music. So they have the songs that they sing and it passes it down through that. Whereas popular music is to make money. You have these huge concerts, you sell out these venues. Michael Jackson, when he was alive, I'm playing to thousands and thousands of people in sync selling two million albums um, in their first week um, of album sales. Those, the, they make money. That is the purpose of it. If they're not making any money, then they're no longer going to be um, signed with their record label. Folk music is to tell a story. Pop music is to make money. And there can be things that start off as a folk culture and then transform into a popular culture. Sports, in your textbook, you'll see it talks about uh, soccer, lacrosse. All of those started as very specific sports to a specific people group. Um, and then it caught on popularity and moved wildly throughout the world. Soccer is now the most popular sport in the world. The World Cup is the um, single most watched sporting event every four years. Um, but it started off as a small um, sport for a specific people group that then gained popularity as the Europeans began to diffuse around the world and they began to colonize the world. Um, it then spread and became um, widely successful and popular. It's a very easy sport to play. All you need is a ball and you can kick it around. There's no real other major equipment. So that's why it became so popular in those areas. And then music, things like country music, um, started off as very folk, very folksy, talking about selling stories. And now it's more mainstream and very popular. Um, reggae is another example of this. And the biggest example is hip hop. Hip hop was to a very specific group about very specific um, issues that were faced in New York City, started off um, in certain areas of the city and then diffused out. And now it is one of the biggest money making um, industries in the world. So you can have a transition where something starts off as folk culture and moves into popular mainstream culture. There can also be things that they that people borrow from folk culture to then um, use in there. Some fashion um, designs that they have, some of the Indian um, designs that are more popular for certain um, people to wear and fashion can be seen as moving from folk, folk culture to popular culture as well. So um, now you're going to uh, answer the five questions on the form, turn that in, and then fill out the chart um, that's also on Edmodo, and I'll see you tomorrow in class.